guys, Rose from Mecco here. For today's video, we're going to walk through how to get started creating job files and making marks with the Lightwriter by Mecco laser marking system. Now this is going to be a high level overview, so if you need something a little more in depth on the Winlay software, we do have other videos available for more in depth training. Start by turning on and enabling the laser and then open the shutter. In the software, we'll go ahead, we'll open up Winlay's. And the first thing we're gonna do is we need to make sure that our laser is connected. So in our laser system viewer, this right here, this is our laser. Now, right now ours looks black, which means we're not connected. So we'll right click, hit connect. And you'll see now the laser is blue, which means we're connected. The next thing we'll do is we have to make sure that our job file is assigned to the laser. Uh, and you can tell from the tree here on the left. So right click on your job file, hit assign to and select your laser. And now you can see our job file is directly connected to the laser. Then we'll check and make sure our offline configuration matches the online configuration. So go ahead and if it doesn't match, you can change your source and lens to match the online. The first thing we're gonna do is for our setting up is we wanna set our focal height. So to do this, we'll have to utilize our programmable Z-axis. To activate our Z-axis, first you click on the laser, then you go down to the motion manager and pick your Z-axis. It's a good idea to home the system first. So from your action list, you'll choose home. And when we hit go, we'll see the Z-axis will move up and down to the home position. You'll want to make sure that you remove your lens cap from the lens. So you can take that out, put it aside. And now we can go ahead, we can load our part so we can set our focal height. Now you will use the focal stick that was provided in your box, which this sets the distance between the surface of the part that you're marking to the flat ring around the lens. So I'm gonna take my part and load it into the system. Now, if you have thick string, you can you know, secure that into the breadboard. But we load the part, and if you know the height of your part, you can type that into your control panel. Otherwise, you can kind of nudge the system up and down until you have the correct height. So we're gonna use our focal stick, and we'll go from the surface of the part to the flat ring. Now you can see, Mine needs, my rail needs to move up quite a bit to be in focus with uh, the marking surface. So in my motion manager, I'm gonna change the action to relative, which moves it uh, a certain amount based on where it's currently at. My part's about 11 millimeters thick, so I'm gonna move my laser rail up 11 millimeters. Now I'm just gonna double check and make sure this looks right. So from the part that I'm marking to the flat ring, it looks pretty good. So we'll just put this away in here, and now my focal height is set. Next, we'll go back to the software and we will uh, create some objects to mark. All right, so first we'll go ahead, we'll make a text object. You have your toolbar here on the left. So we'll choose our text. And for this example, we'll just say this is a part number. We'll just type in some numbers here. Okay, so that created my text object. Now we can size that. So we'll right click and hit dimensions, or F5 is the hotkey. And that brings up our dimensions window. Now, if you click on the size tab, we can size this to uh, a specific height. For this example, I'm gonna make this two and a half millimeters tall. All right, so now that is sized. Next, we're going to give this a profile. In the top right corner, you have a list of different profiles or recipes. So it's a list of different materials as well as uh, different types of marks that you can get with the laser. Now, if this isn't populated, you can use the profiles that were provided on the flash drive in the box. In the flash drive, go to the Lightrider folder, choose 20 watt profiles, and then select your lens, whether you have a 160 or a 254. Hit Control A to grab everything in the folder, and then copy these files. 
Then go into your C drive and we're gonna go to the marker folder, marker folder, choose profiles and paste everything inside of here. Then whenever you restart Winlays, your profile should be populated. All right, so the material we're working with, uh, this is aluminum and we're gonna do a dark mark. So I find my aluminum dark mark profile right here and I'll right click and hit apply to object. Now what that does is that applies your power, frequency and speed to this object. So if I right click and go into the properties, we have our power, frequency and speed, which this was populated by these profiles. This is one half of getting your settings. The second half is going to be your fill. So if we choose the fill tab, uh, right now our style says parallel lines. We're going to change that to bi-directional. Now the second half of your profile names, it doesn't automatically set it for you, but it tells you what to set your fill to. Uh, so we have dark mark 07 MMB. The B stands for bi-directional. Uh, if you see an X in here, that stands for crosshatch. So we chose B for bi-directional, and now we'll set the spacing. For a dark mark, which is right here, our spacing is 07 mm, which stands for 0 0.07 millimeters. And you can see that tightened up my lines. So now our uh, settings are complete. The last thing to check for this is down at the bottom, you have mark object and mark fill. Mark object will do the outline of your object and mark fill is what colors it in. All right, so we have our part number. Next, we'll throw in a barcode. From our list here, this is our barcode function. So we'll choose that. And uh, we're gonna do a 2D data matrix. And then we'll just type in the information we want to embed inside, which in this case, we're just gonna do our part number. Hit add, and it creates our barcode for us. Now we can set the height. So we'll do size, and we'll make this a six millimeter barcode. And then same concept, uh, we're gonna do the same thing that we did for our text. We're going to apply our laser settings. So I can go back, we're gonna do a dark mark for this, and then we're going to copy that object and add a frosted background to it. So for the dark, we're gonna do aluminum dark mark. We'll open the property so you can see it change this time. So you see that populated our power frequency and speed. We'll go to our fill, change that to bi-directional, and tighten that up to 0 0.07 millimeters. Okay, and then for this barcode down here, we have our mark fill checked. We'll leave the mark object unchecked. We don't need the modules to have the outline. We're gonna add this um, same barcode. We're gonna take it, copy it, and invert it to make a frosted background. So right click and copy and then we'll right click and hit paste. And now I have a duplicate of this object. So if I go into the properties of the second one, go to my tuner tab, and we're going to select invert barcode. And we'll change this to just one quiet border. Okay, it, now it just kind of looks like a big black blob. So we'll change the on-screen color in the settings tab. Uh, we'll change this. So now we can see it a little better. Okay, now we have to, we created our object, now we have to give this a different profile. So we want this to be a brighter mark so that it really helps with picking up the barcode. So we're gonna give this a frosted background. So for my profiles, I choose aluminum, frost mark, right click, apply to object. So that's my power, frequency, and speed in the properties. See that changed and then we just have to set our fill. So for the frost mark, it's a 0 0.04 millimeter fill. We will change that, hit apply, and now that should be good to go. All right, so now before we get into actually running the program, the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to get our positioning and then we'll go ahead and make a test mark to see how we did. First, a little trick that we can go through if you'd like to align your objects, 
you can uh, use your align tool. So you pick the objects that you want to move first, and then the object you want to align it to, you pick that last. Uh, so from the object tree, hold control while you're selecting these. Okay, and now they're all selected. So right here, this is our align tool. So we'll choose that, and we'll center justify these, just so it's all nice and neat. Okay, and I'm just gonna move this, this object a little bit closer to my barcode. So grab this, and we're gonna nudge that down. So from the keyboard, you can hold control and use your arrows. All right, so these are these have all of the profiles. They are uh, aligned with each other. Now we'll go ahead and we'll do a preview mark so we can see where this is actually going to show up. So you can select the objects that you want to preview and then right click and hit preview mark. <clears throat> okay, now inside the enclosure, you get a red diode box and this is showing where our mark is going to be. You can either move the part to the mark, or you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard to move the, the mark to the part. Okay. Once you have it in position, then you're ready to make a test mark. We'll go ahead, we'll shut the door. Once we're ready to make our test mark, you can choose from your toolbar, you can do quick mark, which quick mark will mark only the objects that you have selected. Um, or you can choose all and it'll mark everything in the file. But for this, we're gonna hit group and see how we did. Once it's done, we can open the enclosure and we have our mark. So this mark looks pretty good. If you're happy with it, then you can go ahead, save your job file and um, start running your production. But if you're not happy with it, uh, if you want a faster cycle time, a different contrast, then you can um, change your settings and tweak them to get the appearance that you want. Now, one other thing you can do if you do wish to utilize the programmable Z feature so you don't have to set your focal height every time, you can use the automation tool over here. So choose uh, new automation and then select linear motion, add. Now this adds it to the bottom of the job file. You can either do this first when, you're, when you start setting up or you can move it up in the tree, but you want this object to be the first object in the job file. So when you run the program, the first thing it does is move to the correct position. So you have your object created. Now we have to assign some values. So we'll right click and hit properties. Assign the Z axis, and then to get these values, you'll choose your Z axis from your motion manager. Your current position, you'll plug into the move box, uh, and make sure that you choose move to an absolute position. We'll move, you know, in this case, 11 millimeters, and then you have to match your speeds with what is in your control panel. So if you hit the blue arrow, here, you can get your values and you'll just want to make sure that these match. So our initial speed, we have five millimeters per second. Slew speed, we are at uh, about eight. Acceleration rate, we're at 10. And the decel rate is also 10. All right, so once we have those, we hit apply, hit okay. And now whenever we run the program, the first thing it will do is move to that position that we programmed in. All right, and when you're ready to actually run the program, once you're done with setting everything up and you did your test mark, once you're happy, then to run the actual program, you can choose the run process button and hit go, and then it'll start working its way through the job file. Well, I hope this video helped you to get set up and running. If you want to see how quickly the process goes from unboxing to setup, check out our other Light Rider by Mecco setup video. If you have questions or if you just need additional support, feel free to reach out.